Do you want to know my secret for getting better at using software? I always try to find what's one feature or one item that if I start taking advantage of it, will streamline my process, will jumpstart me, push me down the line quicker so that my development, my you know, use, of this, use of that program just exponentially grows. In Microsoft PowerPoint, I think the feature that a lot of people don't take advantage of, but has that capability of really pushing your development to the next level is the selection pane. And that's what we're going to cover today. So let's take a look at the basics of the selection pane, where it's located, what it looks like, what it does. To access the selection pane in PowerPoint, you want to go to the Home tab, and then in the Drawing section, which is kind of smack dab in the middle of the ribbon, you're going to drop down Arrange, and at the bottom of the drop down list, you're going to choose Selection Pane. This will open up the selection pane over on the right hand side, which will show you a line item for every asset that is on that slide canvas. So not only the slide itself, but all the area around it. And then you've got some features that we'll dive into later about uh, toggling visibility, locking, moving things up, moving things down. One of my pain points with PowerPoint is that they buried the selection pane. My recommendation, go up under a range, bring your cursor down to the selection pane and right click on it and choose the first app first option which is add to quick access toolbar this will then give you the selection pane on the stagnant bar that is always available regardless whatever tab you're on so now i can get to the selection pane with very little mouse mileage now that we know the basics of the selection pane let's look at a few of the key features that are going to just help jumpstart your process. When you look at this, when you look at a PowerPoint slide through the lens of the selection pane, at the most basic level, it lists off all the objects that are on the slide and on the canvas itself. But it will do a whole bunch more than that as well. As you can see, next to the item, right? So next to what the mountain or the morph text or the night sky. We've got a few, we've got a couple icons. What looks like an eye is, is just that. It, this is what shows visibility. So if I was to unclick the, you know, if I was to click on that, it will hide out that item. So in this case, my mountain image. And actually you can see the morph text that was sitting behind that mountain. So by clicking these items, I'm able to you know, hide out specific specific text or specific assets on the slide. Notice if I click on an item, so look, if I click on this line for morph text, it highlights it and I can now grab that item and drag it around, even though technically it's sitting behind one of the assets, in this case, the image of the mountain. I can also do things where I can lock or unlock specific items. So normally, right, I here's my slide image of the, you know, of the night sky. But if I click on the lock button next to it, that item now doesn't move. One of the key items on the selection pane is you have the ability to rename objects or assets as you put them on here. So take a look, we've got a blank slide here with nothing currently on the slide. So let's come over and let's go in and let's just add in a shape, right? I'm just gonna draw in a rectangle. So now notice that item has come up on the, on the selection pane and PowerPoint's going to name it. Uh, generally in this case, it's gonna give, it gave it the name rectangle. It's actually rectangle one. But I could come over and I can just click into click into the list and now change it over to whatever I want to call it. Another feature of the selection pane is it allows you to look at your slide in terms of layers or how things are stacked on the slide itself. When you look at the selection pane, whatever's at the top of the list is all the way at the front of the 
slide image. So if I was to toggle off visibility on this top item, notice it falls away because it is at the front of the, you know, it's at the front of the slide image. But I can rearrange things two ways. We've got arrows. So if I selected, let's say, middle, and I move it to the, you know, move it up, which would bring it to the front, it is now sitting on top of the, the front item. So again, if I untoggle visibility, notice that piece is still there, but it is hidden by the item that's on, on top of it. So you can use the arrows to move, or you can click and drag, and you'll notice you get this red line, and it will show you where you can move things to. The selection pane makes grouping and ungrouping of objects very simple. When you look at the selection pane, I can you know, select as many items as I want, and then go up under Shape Format and choose Group. Control G would also do it. Um, you'll see that there is now a group name, right, which I would recommend changing to something else. And then underneath that group name, slightly indented in, is every asset that's part of that. And if we close the little, that little caret, it will just show you the group name. And if you expand it, it will show you everything that's part of that. PowerPoint selection pane is also very important when it comes to working with animations. Animations are assigned to specific objects or assets on the slide itself. So the naming of our items in the selection pane will also appear when we go and look at the animation pane. So if you go under the animations tab and then under advanced animations, select animation pane. When we assign animations to a slide or to an object on the slide, it's going to be assigned to the name of the item from the selection pane. So the way we name things is going to determine how easily it is for you to figure out exactly what you're working at when you're looking at your animation list. For the morph transition to work correctly, it is going to be based off of the name or how an item is named in the selection pane. So in my example here, I've got a, a rectangle on the rectangle two is on the left hand side of one slide. On the next slide, rectangle two, the name I've named it on this selection pane, is over on the right hand side. So if I go and I look at it in presentation mode and I transition to the next slide, because it is they're both named the same, PowerPoint will apply this morph transition and move it from its current location to its other location. But what happens if we have, we want to go from a rectangle and morph it into a circle, right? So I've got one called rectangle two, I've got a circle called oval one, If the names don't match and I try to transition, it doesn't work. One fades out, the other fades in. So a pro tip for you, to get shapes to morph from one shape to another, what you need to do is you need to use two exclamation points and then give it a name. So I'm just going to call it you know, exclamation point, exclamation point, shape. And then what I would do is go in, highlight the name, copy it, go into the, the previous slide that the one we want to have it morph into, paste it there, right? So they've both been changed. And if it's in other, on other slides, you'd want to do that as well. You know, go through and make, the, make sure the name is the same across the board. But now if we look at this in preview mode, right? So we've got our, our rectangle. And when I go to the next slide, it morphs it now into a circle. Did you see what I mean about how this one feature can really change the way you develop PowerPoints? How you can, you're gonna be able to work quicker, work faster, work more efficiently in Microsoft just by taking advantage of the selection pane? 
seeing all these features in action is great, but more importantly, you need to actually put this into action yourself. So let's take a look at the short homework assignment I have for you so that you're going to be able to grow your skills in, in PowerPoint using the selection pane. The homework assignment today is quick and easy and it follows along with the features of the selection pane. You're going to be creating a slide with a series of objects, working through how to manipulate those. We're going to add it to your quick access toolbar, work on toggling visibility on and off. You'll be looking at how to rename or you're going to you're going to be going through and renaming objects, change up the layering order of how they stack on the on the slide itself, how to select hard to click objects directly from the selection pane and then working with grouping and ungrouping. Obviously you can pause the video to get the assignment. I will also put it into the description of the of the video itself. If so if you don't want to pause, you can see it right from the description. If you found any benefit in this video, just take a moment. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel, like it, comment, any of those things. All of those actions help me create more videos, put the resources into building out more items. Other than that, I hope you guys all have a great day.